The Unshackled Waves, episode 188. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. While Australian politics is mainly contested by the two major parties, we have a wide variety of minor parties who have representation in our Senate and various state upper houses. One of the newest minor parties on the block is the Australian Conservatives, founded by former Liberal Cora Bernardi. They join a long list of right-wing parties vying for a Senate seat at the next election. And we are joined today in the studio by the Australian Conservatives' Victorian Senate candidate, Kevin Bailey AM. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, you've built up an impressive uh, CV throughout your life. You've served in the military and the Australian Special Forces in the SAS Regiment and then a distinguished career in financial planning, which included a media career in print and radio presenting on finance and investment. So you've entered politics uh, late in life. So how's your career influenced your politics? Well, I'm not sure whether um, my career has influenced my politics. My politics have in, in, influenced my uh, career, but I've always been very uh, keen to do the right thing by by my family, by my country, and to um, to really help others. And so uh, it got to the point where I was just so frustrated by some of the games and and the carry on that's been carrying on, uh, particularly in Canberra, but you know right across our political spectrum. And so you know I really felt that you know I need to stand up and and really speak. To the values that I live by and that I believe in. Uh, now, yeah, it hasn't just been a uh, working career. You've done a lot of uh, philanthropic work, uh, obviously to do with your your faith and family, which uh, obviously is part of uh, both. Uh, uh, obviously, your career is uh, economic, but also there's the uh, social and cultural side, which is the other coin of conservatism. Sure, I'm I'm a social conservative, and um, I don't make any excuses for that. I think it's the best way to to really uh, raise children and to um, to live to live your life. But also, um, I'm very much an economic conservative. I'm very very concerned about the level of debt, about the way that people think we can borrow our way to prosperity. And you know, no one seems to be making the argument that we need to um, rein in and uh, live within our means. And uh, people need to be given the opportunity to um, to find work. And so any way we can grow the economy and expand the economy, then it's going to give the dignity of work. The best form of welfare is a job. And uh, for a lot of people, uh, particularly younger people, it's really tough to find a job because of all the games and all the game playing that's been going on, which is not allowing us to compete on uh, on the world stage. Now, your CV would be enough to impress any Liberal pre-selectors. You probably could have got a nice, uh, safe Liberal seat. So why did you choose to join Australian Conservatives? I'm not interested in getting involved in politics just so that I can have a career. There's too many careerists that are working in um, political parties and worried about uh, getting involved. I felt that the, the, the best return on investment for the work that I was going to do was to be focusing on getting control of the upper house. If we can control the Senate, we can control the legislation and we can actually stand uh, there, whichever party, Labor or Liberal, is in the lower house, they're going to have to contend with us. If we get a senator up from each state, uh, we could have six or you know five, six, seven uh, senators that could actually block um, legislation which is against the worldview or the principles that we believe in and we think are going to be best for the, um, the prosperity of this country. Now, Australian Conservatives, it joins a wide uh, array of minor parties on the right vying for a Senate seat. There's One Nation, the Liberal Democrats, Catter's Australian Party, the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party, Christian Democrats and the Australian Liberty mm -hmm. Alliance. So how can Australian Conservatives emerge as the, the main alternative for, for voters on the right? And of course, most importantly, what, what you're, you've just mm -hmm. said, uh, win Senate seats. Well, the thing is, is that we don't have to win 51% of the vote like the major parties have to win. We have to win about 10% of the primary vote. And so we're very, very focused on being very clear on what our principles are. Our principles inform our decisions. 
and our principles inform the policies that we set up. One of the things that we've been very concerned about is the fact that the major parties are not meeting the needs of uh, the electorate. They're not meeting the me needs of people who are very, very concerned about what's going on with political correctness and with, with all of the uh, the rot that's been happening with changing prime ministers and, and people worrying about their own internal uh, fights rather than focusing on the country. So we've we feel very strongly that we need to have a set of policies that are informed by our principles so that we don't you know stand for tax cuts one day and then next day we decide that we're against tax cuts and then we're for tax cuts again that's not going to get us anywhere we're going to have the unrepresentative swill that keating talked about in the senate we've got about 30 to 40 percent of uh, voters are no longer wanting to uh, vote for the major parties and in the senate uh, they've changed the rules so that it's going to be very very hard for small parties to get up but if we can be very clear and very focused on what we stand for we can be very sensible and uh, very prudent in the way that we act i think we can actually convince most australians who are voting for uh, for smaller parties to vote for us because they know what we stand for and they know that we're not for changing we're not for turning we are going to be very clear that we stand for limited government we stand for personal responsibility for free enterprise for stronger families and for a stronger civil society where people have got dignity and uh, instead of people uh, relying on the government for a handout, they've got an opportunity to make something for themselves and they can actually get up through the uh, pecking order. They can get up from, um, you know, uh, being, you know, sort of on the, um, the bottom of the heap and they can make their way up towards the top of the heap. I grew up in a two bedroom housing commission house with uh, eight kids in the family and my dad was a factory worker he worked very very hard and uh, he gave me the opportunity to actually make something of myself and so i think this country has got huge potential for anyone at any social strata to actually move up through the um through the and by hard work and uh, and to actually make something of their lives and we want to make sure that people have got those opportunities instead of uh having government handouts where they they lose their dignity and they become reliant on the government uh, where you've got about 51 percent of the population um, relying on some form of welfare or another and that's not good for anyone it's not good for the country now the marriage law postal survey was seen as an electoral test of conservative values and many of the australian conservatives mm. candidates were involved with the, the coalition for marriage campaign the the yes vote won overwhelmingly 61 percent to 39 percent by a three million vote margin so given that result how can you claim to represent the silent majority um, I didn't say I represented the silent majority. I said I represent a certain uh, group of people. 39% is is a large group of people. When you've got uh, groups of uh, people that have got 1% or 2% of the population um, getting the um, the large amount of um, airplay, whether it's the, uh, the gay lobby or the Islamic um, uh, community, um, there's nothing wrong with any of those people. But the fact is, is that their voice is way beyond their proportion of the uh, community. There's a large proportion of the community that want to have religious freedom they want to have freedom of conscience they want to have freedom of speech they want to have the um, the rights to be able to point a point of view and not to have this coercive utopia where at the you know literally at the barrel of the gun they force people to actually go along with their agenda this political correct agenda so my sense is that uh, there is a um, a very legitimate voice for people to be able to speak up um, in the uh, in the uh, same sex marriage um, um, plebiscite, uh, by the time that we got in um, up to speed, um, they'd already had a they they put a postal vote out there, so it wasn't where you could actually go and have a campaign. They refused to allow people who had an alternative view to even have a voice. They refused to allow people to say, "Hey, I believe in the rights of children over the desires of adults." I don't think that's contentious, but suddenly it became contentious, and they marginalised a very large proportion of the population that just want to live their lives, who want to raise their kids according to their values, and not according to the dictates of some political, uh, correct, politically correct interest group that determines what the kids can be taught at school, what they um, can and cannot say, what you can or cannot believe in. And so, you know, what I'm very, very strong on is the fact that we have got um, a group of people that um, that really have got the right to have a point of view and we need to be able to live um, and respect uh, people of all views in our society, including people who believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. And it seems that um, the um, the lies that were put out by the Yes campaign saying it's just about love is love, it's a tautology, it's not a... It's not a um, 
a real um, explanation of what's going on. They said it wasn't going to affect children. It wasn't going to you know, affect anything else. It's affecting everybody's marriages. It's affecting um, every uh, school and uh, this transgender agenda that they're bringing in, the way they're teaching kids, the, the way that they're trying to actually shut down anybody who's got an alternative view. It becomes the intolerance of tolerance. And so we've got to speak up for the values and the uh, rights of a lot of people that, uh, that think differently. Often uh, this majority they talk about, the six, 61%, uh, they didn't go along with the entire agenda. They just felt they, they, you know, they'd had enough after literally vote after vote after vote. They thought this was going to bring an end to it. Um, even during that campaign, um, many, many votes were shifted when people started to understand the consequences. It's not just about rights, it's about responsibilities, and it's about the consequences of everything that we do in our parliament. And um, I don't think this is over yet. I think there's going to be more consequences to come for people who've got a different view to the, um, the politically um, uh, pro uh, politically correct brigade. So, you know, we've got to fight for the rights of, of people that have got a different point of view and, um, and not a small minority. 39% is not a small minority at all. Now, Australian Conservatives participated in two federal by-election. First was uh, Benelong sure. in uh, Sydney, New South Wales. We obtained uh, four percent of the vote. A lot of that uh, came off the uh, Christian Democrats. And the mm. second was your own campaign in the the inner Melbourne seat of Batman, where you obtained uh, six percent of the vote with uh, no Liberal candidate uh, contesting. Since then, you've chosen not to uh, contest any more of the the by-elections uh, caused by mainly the the dual citizenship uh, saga. Yes. Uh, so were you satisfied with uh, the party's performance and what lessons did the party take from it? Sure, never satisfied with the performance. We always want more. Um, but uh, my objective when I contested the Batman by-election here in Victoria was I had three objectives. The first objective was to block the Greens from getting a second House of Representatives candidate so that Adam Bant could actually uh, put up motions and have them second by another Greens candidate. Our preferences uh, with 6.8% of the vote in uh, the Batman by-election were enough to block the Greens. The Greens spent in excess of a million dollars on their campaign wow. and they didn't get their candidate up. So I was delighted. Number one, yes, tick. The second um, um, objective that I had was that we had to make sure because we wanted to keep our powder dry for the main uh, federal election. And the second um, um, objective that I had was to make sure we didn't spend um, any more money than we had, um, than we had um, that we were able to get back from the Australian Electoral Committee. Commission. So we actually spent $16,000 uh, 16, on that campaign and we got $17,000 back from the Australian Electoral Commission. So tick, it didn't cost us anything. The third option was to make people aware that we exist because we're a brand new party. People don't know we exist. We don't get any mainstream media time. And so the biggest uh, um, um, problem that we've got and that we, we are focusing on overcoming is making people aware of our policies, aware that we exist and aware of what we stand for. And so uh, that campaign, we're able to get on a lot of uh, television, radio and um, media um, in the um, in the newspapers, The Age and The Herald Sun and the um, the local media um, in the in the area. And so it was a real tick in relation to people knew that we were on the ground. One of the um, the greatest um, uh, amount of medias came from the fact that the ABC put out a, um, a Tom Ballard uh, program, which is now no longer um, going to air, but nevertheless, um, put out, I refused to um, to play um, the the man and uh, and played the ball. I refused to actually just mock the Greens for their personalities, and I said I wanted to focus on the policies, so I wasn't going to go on their program. So they actually put up a um, um, a thing where they um, they vilified me. And uh, of course, that got a lot of uh, publicity as well. So, um, you know, the, the fact is, I don't care. They can call me names, they can, um, um, but they don't go to the heart of what our policies stand for. When we've done focus groups and we've talked to people about what we believe in, what we stand for, overwhelmingly people are in agreement with the common sense policies that we've got, but they just don't know that we exist. And so in Batman, um, we had about 20% of the uh, voters did not turn out to vote. 
because if they had have known what our policies were and they know what we stood for, I think we would have got a much larger percentage of the vote. So we've actually made the decision that we're not going to be standing in by-elections or um, other um, elections. Our main focus is that we're going to be third-party insurance in the Senate. We're going to stand in the Senate and we're going to actually put forward an alternative view that is going to actually um, um, you know, stiffen the spine of conservatives in the Liberal Party to, um, to really get rid of some of these bedwetters or some of the wets that are constantly um, going along with this green left ideology that has been infiltrating the Labor Party and now infiltrating the Liberal Party. So my sense of it is, is that we're going to have a very, very strong campaign uh, for the um, federal election for the Senate. We're not putting people into the lower house seats um, necessarily, but we're focusing on the Senate because that's where we get the biggest bang for our buck. That's where we get the return on investment. And uh, if we can pick up 10% of the vote in the uh, federal uh, Senate, um, we could get a uh, senator up from every state. And that's where we're going to make a huge difference uh, going forward. After we've made ourselves well established there, we can start looking at some of these other um, elections and other um, electorates and uh, we can broaden our, um, uh, our um, opportunity to stand in other areas but our focus is laser-like in getting an elect, um, elected centre up from each state. Now you mentioned the the tonightly uh, speech yes. on the on, on the ABC, and I won't uh, repeat uh, what was said there. But uh, you've, uh, as we mentioned, you've been in the military and uh, yeah. business world, but probably nothing can prepare you for for politics, and especially uh, if you're a uh, conservative. Now, a, as you mentioned, you're a you're a tough guy. You can uh, cop the uh, cop the abuse, but uh, the ABC it's supposed to be uh, fair or unbiased uh, yet they put put out uh, something like this and sure. you uh cory bernardi and the communications minister mitch firefield sought an apology uh from the the abc which for, uh, in the end was a sort of half-hearted uh one yes. you're probably satisfied that the the show is now being cancelled it's uh, at its last program but uh what did that experience uh, teach you about how the the media treats conservatives and those on the right uh, it didn't teach me anything. It didn't teach me anything I didn't already know. And quite frankly, um, you know, sticks and stones can break my bones. But, you know, um, big deal. I didn't seek an apology, actually. Um, I know that Corey Bernardi was um, appalled by it. And uh, Mitch Fifield, the communication minister, was appalled by it. And I just shrugged it off. I thought, my goodness, if that is that's all they've got to actually put up as an argument. You know, the whole thing about the left is that they actually categorize everybody in the world into three categories. You're either a victim, you're you're an oppressor, you're, you're, um, you're oppressed, an oppressor or a victim of the oppressed, um, um, you know, or a, um, a supporter of the oppressors. And it's just so pathetic. You know, quite frankly, um, they picked on the wrong guy. The idea that we're going to go and be shrinking violets and we're going to be a victim. Look, I'm not a victim. There is no way known I am a victim. You know, Serena Williams, she can play the victim card, but I'm not playing the victim card. Quite frankly, um, I was very grateful for the ABC to actually um, uh, show um, what they're really like. And so it said more about them than it said about me. And so um, I'm going to really take the charge up to the left and up to these um, these uh, shrinking violets because bullies um, often they're um, when you start to push back against them they start to melt you know like chocolate soldiers they melt in the sun and so the idea of um, these uh, ABC people trying to attack us by calling us names you know quite frankly people are fed up with this they're fed up with the moral the um, you know the uh, fate faked, feigned morality that they carry on with when uh, always they're the ones who are the aggressors. When you've got um, people who are coming out here to speak like Nigel Farage or um, any number of speakers and the uh, the government puts the um, the police force as a um, agent of the state as a um, intimidator that's going to charge people, charge the victims or charge the people that are being, um, you know, uh, protested against. Um, it's just extortion. And using, you know, the police as a uh, vehicle of extortion is absolutely pathetic. So what we're, um, we're, we're saying is that um, the more they do this, the more the public are going to see what their true colours are. And they always overreach. They always um, push too far, and uh, that's going on in a whole range of areas. We're going to be common sense. We're going to be focusing on personal responsibility, limited government, free enterprise, you know, growing the economy, having stronger families and, and having a more civil society. And these are the people on the other side that are less civil 
and are literally trying to tear down all of the bases of Western civilization and all the things that have made us great in the West. And uh, we're not going to um, um, crumple because of a few name calling or a few black eyes or a bit of intimidation. In fact, you know, bring it on because we are going to actually stand up for what is right, what is true and what is truly beautiful about our country and about our, our way of life. And um, they're going to come off second best, I'm afraid. Yeah. They are too right. Absolutely. Now Pardon the pun, too right. Yeah. <laughs> now, Australian Conservatives has not had an elected member yet, and yeah. at, at its peak, you had four uh, MPs. Uh, Cory Bernardi is obviously yeah. your national leader, but sure. he was elected as a Liberal senator. You had two South Australian MLCs who were ex Family First, which merged with. Uh, Australian Conservatives, yeah. uh, and you also had uh, Dr. Rachel Carling Jenkins, who is an MLC in Victoria, who came from the Democratic Labor Party. Now, in the South Australian state election, Robert Brockenshire lost his seat with the uh, Conservative votes uh, down uh, nearly 1% from when it ran as Family First, and then uh, your remaining MLC, Dennis Hood, defected to the Liberal Party. Then in August, uh, Rachel Culling Jenkins left, uh, uh, citing a lack of support from the, the party leadership. Now, obviously, these uh, are all major uh, s setbacks and didn't display uh, unity. Uh, ha what lessons did the, the party take uh, going forward, and how can you avoid uh, sort of things that uh, the media will will pounce on and say oh look at look at them they're in disarray okay we didn't select any of those um um, um participants they uh, came across we inherited uh, those people and so i'm not going to say anything you know um about that other than the fact that we are a new party that's been going for about 18 months and uh we've actually got over twenty thousand members around australia and our membership is growing uh, Corey Bernardi wasn't elected as an Australian Conservatives senator. He came across from the Liberal Party. That's absolutely true. So we haven't had anyone elected to office on our ticket yet. The ones that we have selected, Lyle Shelton in Queensland, um, Sophie York in, uh, in, in New South Wales, myself here in Victoria, we've got... Um, uh, we've got people in, in, in uh, South Australia and uh, Western Australia and, uh, and Tasmania. And uh, we have selected each of these candidates and uh, we are very, very comfortable with the, um, the qualities and the, um, the, the beliefs and the focus. Each of us have uh, gotten involved in this party because we believe in the principles and the policies of what's happening. And um, we have literally um, very, very united on what we have going forward. So one of the problems that we've got with minor parties is individuals who basically chop from one party to another. I don't think we're going to see that with the, the people that we've put up for election. We are very, very committed, very united on what we need to stand for. We're not careerists. We're not looking to, to get into the parliament because we want to be in the parliament. If I wanted to get into parliament, I would have got into it years ago. And I think the same goes for a, a number of my um, colleagues, you know, Ricky Lambert in, in uh, South Australia. We've got um, people who are very, very committed to uh, the principles. And so those principles inform our worldview. They inform our policies and they inform the decisions that we're going to make. We're here because we want a strong conservative voice that's going to actually make a difference and then drag the um, uh, politicians back to the, the sensible approach that is going to benefit all Australians. And so uh, we've got a, a huge task ahead of us and uh, we don't shirk from that task. We're very excited about it. I'm invigorated by it, quite frankly. I can't wait to get out there amongst them and uh, have trigger warnings going off left, right and centre because of the conservative policies that we're going to speak for. And we're not going to back down um, because these are the things we've lived by. These are the things that we believe in at a very core of our existence. So we're literally going to be out there making a big, big difference. And I think that most Australians, once they hear uh, the sorts of policies that we've got, the sorts of things that we stand for, then I think we'll get at least 10% of the population are going to vote for us. I'm going to be traveling right throughout regional Victoria. I'm visiting just about every town, every uh, you know, suburb, every electorate, uh, getting out there and, and having supporter groups meeting. I'm down in um, Rosebud um, on the, uh, in Flinders uh, electorate tonight. Um, I'm literally traveling all over the place 
And we're getting our message out there and uh, it's resonating with people. So my sense is once we get into the parliament, I'm not in it to um, to be prime minister or to be leader of the party or anything like that. I'm there to back up, you know, um, the actual party uh, platform and to represent the people whose views we, um, we are putting forward. And I think that with 20,000 members um, and growing, um, we've got a lot of people that are going to be um, out with boots on the ground. Uh, come uh, the election campaign, which is probably going to be in March, April or May. And I think that we're going to have a very, very strong showing. And, um, you know, we need to actually um, support um, people who are literally prepared to actually um, put it all on the line to actually make a difference in and to put a stop to this political correctness, to put a stop to the sort of rot that's been going on in politics for far too long. You know, people are um, are getting fed up with um, all of this um, rubbish that the left seem to be pushing on us uh, constantly. And and um, as I say, I think they've overreached. Oh, well, you're certainly preparing yourself for the challenge and know that it's going to be mm. uh, require a lot of campaigning and mm -hmm. also a big spend as well. And as you mentioned, the uh, the Senate uh, quota is 14.3 percent since yes. it's a half Senate election and there's no more uh, group voting tickets, mm -hmm. uh, which allowed the, the minor parties to uh, to preference each other. So you're, you're certainly uh, up for up for the up for the challenge. Yes. And you certainly believe that you're a, a realistic chance. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't be traveling around all the place if you didn't think so i'm putting my i'm putting my uh, own resources into this campaign as well as a lot of friends who are donating uh, we've got a lot of our members you know there's nearly four thousand members here in victoria and um and we've got um members that are putting in you know eighty dollars a hundred dollars two hundred dollars five hundred dollars to our campaign we're not relying on big business to support us but um we've got a lot of money i'm putting a lot of my own personal resources into it and a lot of friends are actually coming up and stepping up and saying, hey, I'm prepared to back this as well. Um, but it's also um, requiring me to do a lot of hard work, to get out there, to wear out a lot of shoe leather and to actually speak to whoever um, is uh, interested in a, a better way to actually run this country. We can't afford to let global warming, immigration, uh, political correctness, um, expanded um, government and um, people um, putting uh, everything onto the never-never um, and um, constantly borrowing more and more money. We can't afford to let them destroy our country. We can't afford to let socialism have the, um, the upper hand. When you look at every single country where socialism has been tried, it's failed. Just look at Venezuela as the latest example in a long line of socialist countries. Look at what's happening in America where their unemployment rate is um, is the lowest has been in years and decades and uh, you've got um, um, the economy growing you've got taxes being reduced you've got um, the opportunity to actually make a real difference and in this country we're trying to go in the opposite direction you've got people who are in the major parties in the Liberal Party who are not um, are reflecting their conservative electorates and are running off and uh, chasing every little uh, boondangle and um, and um, political correct um, uh, agenda item that they can possibly get their hands on and it's time for us to speak up up, um, in a caring and loving way, but nevertheless, in a very strong and um, um, and uh, forceful way, that we need to actually stand up for what's right, what works, and what is going to make everybody's lives a lot better, and our children and grandchildren are going to have a, a future. Um, and it's the sort of future that our um, our grandparents, our own grandparents, you know, literally were prepared to lay their life down for in, um, you know, in two world wars. And, um, um, you know, we've got a military now that is um, not focused on their war fighting capacity, but uh, focused on uh, painting their fingernails to support some minority group. This is not the sort of thing that um, our enemies uh, are going to be terrified of, I can tell you. We need to be strong, we need to be real, and we need to be forceful in what is what is uh, the best thing for this country. And uh, the Australian Conservatives are the party, I believe, uh, with passion and with um, enthusiasm, uh, are going to be able to deliver that in the Senate and really put a stop to all of this um, craziness that's been going on, not just with smaller parties, with the major parties, but we need to be very, very solid and very, very focused on what uh, is achievable and set about achieving it. We need to be very targeted. We need to be very focused on uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. And we need to make sure that our policies reflect that and are informed by a worldview, which is uh, one that we can feel proud to leave to our children and grandchildren. 
Well, one campaign tool that the Australian mm. Conservatives has rolled out is the A Better Way app, which yes. is the, the party slogan. Now, it's described as a safe place for Conservatives to interact with each other, share their stories and news, and will also have the ability to target individuals uh, in their community with campaign material. Can you elaborate on uh, what the party hopes to achieve with this app? It's an app that we've got for, um, for our supporters uh, that is, uh, is incredibly powerful. And, uh, you know, what we see is people who've got conservative views are being blocked by uh, Facebook and Twitter and a lot of the social media. And uh, we've got um, all the major parties go door knocking and talking to people and they have information on uh, when people have got conservative views. We can actually target in any neighborhood uh, the 10 to 20 percent of most conservative voters in each neighborhood. And we can go and door knock them specifically, talk to them about what our policies are, what we believe in. And uh, this is going to be a major strategy that we're using for all of our thousands of supporters to get out there. There is nothing that beats face-to-face um, -face contact with uh, potential um, voters. And, you know, the problem with the uh, conservative side of politics is that we, we just don't get out there and do that. Get up and all these groups have been out... Um, maneuvering us you know in the longman by election for example there were four percent of um liberal voters who recalled receiving a visit or speaking to someone from the liberal party whereas there was 16 percent spoke to people from the labor party if we don't get out there and meet um, our voters face to face then the left is going to convince them and is going to um to transform them tra transform them to their um their crazy coercive ideology and so what we've got to do is, is meet people face to face. The app is a way for our, um, our foot sloggers, our people on the uh, ground to be able to go and talk about our policies, talk about our, um, our values, to talk about the things that we stand for. And um, it's a way to have face to face contact. And um, we are going to actually um, put everything into this. And I think it's going to make a huge difference. We can't allow the left to actually take that ground. And if we, if we don't do that over the next couple of election cycles, we'll have lost it forever. And, and that's what they're doing. They're getting into the universities, they're getting into the schools, they're getting into the media, they're getting into the political parties, and they're, um, they're basically uh, conning people that socialism is moral and that it's fair. And it's nothing moral about socialism, and there's nothing fair about socialism. The capital market system is the uh, way to build uh, economic wealth for everybody in our society. And um, a conservative values that have stood us in good stead are the way that we can actually hold on to the Judeo-Christian value set that has brought us to where we are. The Western civilization is the greatest uh, civilization that um, that we've had in in in, uh, in history, and yet we've got this um, this crazy um, um, ideology that says that all belief systems are equal and all, all societies are equal and, um, and that we should be ashamed of our Western civilization. We can't even teach Western civilization principles in universities and schools yeah. anymore. Yeah. This has got to stop and it's got to stop now and this is the time for us to fight back and to stand up for what we believe in. Otherwise, uh, we've got no one to blame but ourselves. Yeah, it's certainly something that mm. there's the... Obviously, the the conservatives who are active at the moment and mm -hmm. they've joined uh, your party, but it's just uh, getting the others who are just going about their their daily lives, uh, who are, who are in their homes, getting them to sort of, hey, you need to yeah. uh, get a bit more get a bit more active here. Sure. Things aren't going to change unless the, you do the, something. The left, by their nature, are collectivists, and they all you know think the state is the greatest good and the greatest uh, thing they need to believe in is the state, and the state becomes this coercive. Um, monolith that um, that basically um, enrolls them and they've been lied to and lied to and lied to. It's Orwellian. It's like 1984, the way that the left has actually um, said that all people are equal except some people are more equal and the way that they've done these things. And so we've got to wake up those people who are too busy you know, looking after their own families, running their own businesses, getting involved in their own lives and they've got to basically get out of their um, um, their um, there's there's sort of uh, quiet lives and get out there and make a difference and so i'm one of those i haven't been involved in any political parties or stood for election before batman and uh, now i'm absolutely committed to what we need to do and um, i'm coming across um, just about every day of the week, many, many more people who've woken up 
to what's gone on because the left has overreached and they've um, they've made us um, they've poked the bear, they've poked the sleeping bear, and we're angry and we're out there and we're saying enough is enough. They've overreached. And um, this is the time to actually turn back the tide and to make a real difference and to uh, to actually you know regain our country again and to actually stand up for uh, all the things that have made us great and made us um, a, a very very um, 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 gr you know great and um, noble uh, civilization and uh, we can be compassionate. The left has not got a monopoly on compassion. And uh, we um, can actually give people dignity and we can help them to actually live better lives and to actually stand for something that is uh, much more valuable than the uh, cultural Marxism that has come from the left um, over the last hundred years. It's been nothing but misery and death. And it's about time we actually spoke up for that. Well, Kevin, best of luck with the, the campaign. <laughs> uh, I noticed throughout the interview, you've got your message messaging uh, spot on. So uh, uh, keep spreading that. Uh, you're obviously aware that the, the campaign will be a lot of hard work, but that's what you've been doing your, your whole life. And, and Hard work never killed anyone. <laughs> and thanks for speaking with The Unshackled. It's always a pleasure anytime. Thank you, Tim. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. As the federal election grows closer, we hope to speak with more candidates. The Free Speech Coalition, recently formed to fight the $68,000 Victoria Police Bill, handed out to Axmatic Events, who organise Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux's Australian Tour, is presenting the first ever Independent Media Award, which aims to recognise alt media personalities and sites in Australia. And of course, we would like you all to vote for the Unshackled. You can do so by going going to freespeechcoalition.info slash media award. An event that our Sydney followers may be interested in is the International Freedom of Speech Day, which is being held in Lakemba, Sydney on Saturday the 6th of October at 12pm. You may remember that the Lakemba Mosque was the location where Lauren Southern was told by local police to move along when uh, she approached her during her Australian tour. It is being organised by the True Blue Crew New South Wales and Patriot lawyer John Bolton. We are still promoting the Australian tour of internet television personality and founder of the Proud Boys, Gavin McGuinness. You can grab your tickets, including various VIP passes, by going to gavinlive.com.au. Also, to keep The Unshackled growing and active, please consider becoming a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled, or like many of you have been doing recently, send us a direct contribution via our PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash The Unshackled, which we're all very grateful for. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.